how do apps draw circles? Actually, they don't. They just draw things that make you think they are circles. Now, if you were to draw a circle on a piece of paper, most likely you'll be using a compass. And here's a picture of a compass. You have a pencil on one end, a needle on the other end, and you put the needle on the paper, and then you bring the pencil around, you get a circle. So that's how you would draw a circle on a piece of paper, for example. But what about drawing a circle on the screen, like this one? Well, here I'm using an app called Dolcinos. And you can see it's really easy to draw a circle. And I can have different colors. So, how do you tell a computer to draw a circle? Now, of course, if you are using a programming language that has the command that lets you draw a circle by specifying a center and the radius, they automatically do it for you. But sometimes you don't have the luxury. For example, if you are using OpenGL, there's no primitive command for drawing a circle. But you do have something called a line loop. Now let's look at a circle that I can draw with this app. Is this really a circle? Well, let me blow this up and take a closer look. And let's zoom in a bit, even a bit closer. Now, if you look at this carefully, it doesn't look entirely smooth. And you might notice a joint here, a joint here, and a joint here. So this is not exactly a circle. It looks like this is a polygon with many sides. But is it really a problem? Anyway, let me make this smaller again. The thing is, this really looks like a circle, and so we'll say it's a circle. So. Let's see how we can draw such a thing, and we'll look at two different ways to do it. Say you have a coordinate system imposed on the screen. Say this is your screen, and the horizontal axis is the x-axis, and the vertical axis is the y-axis. And suppose we are drawing a circle. Say this is my circle. Then the circle consists of points x comma y, satisfying this equation. Where r is two in this case, so r is the radius. So the set of points x comma y satisfying this equation x squared plus y squared equal to r squared will give you the circle with radius two centered at the origin. Now, how do you draw a polygon that resembles this circle? One possibility is to sample points by looking at various values for x. Say we start at x equal to minus two. And then minus 1.75, minus 1.5, and so on. So we say, for each of the following values of x, uh, calculate y equals plus or minus r square minus x square. And in this case, r is two, right? So this will give me the following points. And so I will get a point here, a point here at minus 1.75, and so on, something like that. So those are my points, and if I join them up, I should get something that hopefully resembles a circle. So let me just do that. So I'm going to join these up. Okay. So that's my approximation to the circle by sampling all these points. Does it look like a circle to you? Well, it looks like things look pretty good down here, but over here, things are a bit terrible. So on these two sides, things don't really look that smooth, and that's a problem because the two points, uh, this is a minus two. So the thing is, between these two points, the distance here is quite big, whereas At the top or at the bottom, the difference between the two sampled points are quite close together. So ideally, if you want something that looks a bit more even, we just sample points evenly on the circle. And how do we do that? That's where we can use polar coordinates. Sounds like a scary term, 
but don't worry, we just have to use a little bit of trigonometry. Let me go back to our circle. So how do we sample points evenly? Okay, suppose I want to get 12 points evenly around the circle. Well, we know what we have to do, right? To go around the circle once, that's 2 pi radians. So we set the point 2, 0. And if we go 1, 12 around the circle, it will be 2 pi over 12. So the angle is going to be uh, here. And this angle here will be 2 pi over 12. And then the next point here, that will be 2 times 2 pi over 12. The next point here will be 3 times 2 pi over 12. This point here will be 4 times 2 pi over 12, and so on. So if you take integer multiples of 2 pi over 12 and go around the circle with the angle, you get 12 points evenly. And what are the coordinates of this first point here? The thing is, if you look at the line segment between this point, let's call that x, y, and the origin. Say the angle that it forms with the non-negative x-axis is theta. Then, this point here can be expressed as r times cos theta, comma r times sine theta, where r is the radius of this circle. So we can compute the coordinate of this point on the circle by computing cosine of theta and sine of theta multiplied both by r. And if you want, say, to sample n points around the circle, all you have to do is you take integer multiples of 2 pi over n, where n is the number of points you want to sample. But this means that you can use this method to draw a regular n gon. For example, if I connect up the yellow dots here, so this was a yellow dot as well, I will get a regular 12 gon. But if I take n to be large, what I'm going to get is something that looks like a circle. And in fact, this is what Dou Chenos does. This black circle that you see here uh, basically has n equal to around 60. So what you see here in this black circle is actually a 60-sided polygon. But it looks like a circle, and that's good enough. Of course, you can make it really, really close to a circle by taking this to be, say, 1,000. But imagine if you have to draw lots of circles like this, I have some ellipses here, but uh, the idea is the same. If I draw lots of circles, well, you don't want to sample too many points from each one because, say, if I have to do zoom in and zoom out, uh, you have to redraw these circles in some ways, and the efficiency is affected. Anyway, I hope you find it a bit interesting to know that apps don't really draw circles. They just draw approximations of circles. Now, there's one question that you might be asking. How does the computer know the cosine and sine of an angle? Well, this is something that we'll do in a separate video. But until then, have fun drawing some circles, because there's math for that.